Welcome to True White Allies, where we celebrate the forgotten history of white anti-racists so their stories can inspire you to take action today. This episode tells the story of Abby Kelly Foster, an advocate for equal rights for black people and women. I rejoice to be identified with the despised people of color. If they are to be despised, so ought their advocates to be. This quote is by Abby Kelly Foster, an abolitionist who advocated for women's rights and a woman who would not be silenced. She was once dragged out of a Quaker meeting for speaking when she was told not to. Abby Kelly was born in 1811 in Massachusetts to a family of Quakers on a farm. She was a teacher and became interested in abolition after she heard a lecture. Abby Kelly married an abolitionist, Stephen Simmons Foster, and together they fought for the end of slavery and equal rights for women. See, this makes sense to me, being in a relationship with someone who shares your values. What I don't get is when people say they're against racism, but then get into relationships with people who are racist. Make it make sense. They bought a farm together in Massachusetts and named it Liberty Farm. The farm was a stop on the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad was a secret network of routes and safe houses in the US used by enslaved people. They used it to escape to places where slavery was illegal. Abby Kelly began her activism by joining the female anti-slavery society of Lynn. When she became a member, one of her first assignments was to collect signatures to petition the federal government to end slavery in the district of Columbia. The society believed that if slavery ended in the capital, it would filter to other parts of the country. Abby Kelly was successful in her assignment because she collected almost half of the women's signatures in Lynn. In 1837, the first anti-slavery convention of American women was held in New York City. Abby Kelly attended as a delegate on behalf of the Lynn Society. The Grimke sisters, who were also abolitionists, helped to organize the convention and they were ensured that black women were invited. It occurred to them to do this even back in 1837. Today I see events about women empowerment and women in the workplace, but then I look at the panel and black women just seem to be missing. It's almost like we don't exist in the workplace. The following year, Abby Kelly attended the convention at Pennsylvania Hall in Philadelphia. This time she gave her first public speech against slavery. This was even though there was an angry mob outside. Abby Kelly went on to give many more lectures and speeches. In 1843, she spoke at Liberty Party Convention, making her one of the first women in the US to speak at a national political convention. One of Abby Kelly's beliefs was that abolitionists must leave churches that did not fully condemn slavery. In 1841, she left the Quakers because they argued over allowing anti-slavery speakers in their meeting houses. She also encouraged other activists to confront their religious leaders. After the American Civil War, Yeah, that war was wild. People went to fight to protect their right to own other people. Wow. After the American Civil War, the 15th Amendment was introduced in 1870. The amendment was created to protect the rights of black men to vote after the Civil War. At the time, all women in the US couldn't vote even white women. Some of the women's rights activists, including Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, were not happy about it. They resorted to making racially offensive statements to prove their point. Elizabeth Stanton wrote in an article, think of Patrick and Sambo and Hans and Yong Tung who do not know the difference between a monarchy and a republic, who never read the Declaration of Independence or Webster's spelling book, making laws for Lydia Maria Child. Lucretia Mott or Fanny Kemble. Oh my, how the racism jumps out when people don't get their way. Here's a tip. If you resort to making racially offensive comments when you're angry, sad, or when you drink, you might be racist. Abby Kelly supported the 15th Amendment. She recognized that black people getting the right to vote, although it was just men at the time, was still progress. Despite the amendment, black men were still often prevented from exercising their right to vote. In 1920, white women finally got the right to vote, but not black women. It wasn't until the Voting Rights Act was passed in 1965 that black people could exercise their right to vote in the US. US. Abby Kelly died in 1887, a day before her 76th birthday. White people who want to be allies can learn so much from Abby Kelly's life. But I'll leave you with this. Better opportunities for others doesn't take away your rights. Laws and policies that provide the access to groups that have historically been excluded are not a threat to you. And if it feels like a threat, reflect on why that is. Do you genuinely believe that everyone deserves to have the same opportunities? Hi, I'm Nathan Banks, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please like it and share it with two white people you think would benefit from watching it.